In this video, we're going to continue discuss uh, the analysis of the functional specification. And uh, we're going to discuss um, how we transition from um, the requirements, uh, the use case requirements, uh, to designing our classes. So the set of topics um, is what approaches are we going to take to design our objects um, and uh, again we're going to review the responsibilities our first presentation is from requirements to classes part of our discussion is also how do we assess the quality of classes that we design so one of the challenges is that uh, use case requirements are purely declarative, uh, task-oriented, and step-by-step -step, uh, type of scenarios. Uh, whereas uh, uh, what we need to design, uh, we need to design a structure that has to support these requirements. And this will be based on objects. So basically we transition from non-object-oriented um, um, style uh, documentation uh, to a uh, much more structured um, and object-oriented. And as we begin to uh, discover classes and make decisions on uh, certain classes uh, to define and make them present in our design, um, what are the, uh, the means and methodology to validate our decisions? So that's another uh, set of questions that we'd like to address. There are different categories of objects uh, which will be uh, instantiated from the classes that we add to our structure. So entity objects typically are um, objects that contain information about business. Uh, the um, entity objects uh, basically needs persistence. So if you think about it, uh, if we have uh, a database or a file system that is our persistence layer or a database server that we can um, access and uh, start transacting with. So the entity objects, basically uh, their state uh, is stored somewhere as records. So these records uh, in, the, in the relational databases typically may be stored in multiple rela um, relational tables and there could be some constraints, um, some relationships between the actual database uh, structures. And uh, objects that typically are loaded from the database so that they become objects in memory and likewise, these objects that require to be persistent, that require to be stored uh, in the persistence layer, uh, typically are referred to as entity objects. Interface objects model the information and behavior dependent on interface to the system. So, of course, the user interface is part of this. And, of course, the behavior of the system is quite visible at the level of user interface in front of screens that the user can see. However, our system uh, can also interact. So this is if this is our system with all of the use cases already implemented, it may actually inter interact with other systems uh, on a separate uh, computer in different networks. So when we uh, interact with uh, these systems, this also like when we design certain objects in our system which are responsible for maintaining connections with other systems and um, which encapsulate the protocol uh, that we should follow to be able to make connections to other systems to be able to start reading and writing information uh, those objects are also fall into the category of interface objects. So uh, the same thing with user screen, right? So when we have certain user interface, um, um, very likely we are going to create uh, certain objects that basically are designed specifically to handle uh, user interaction and validate uh, user uh, input uh, 
uh, on uh, on their screens and control objects generally control the execution of um, use cases also sometimes uh, you may have design we design our system and we may try to split uh, parts uh, of our system somehow designate different parts of our system uh, system into components right so typically you will have not a single um, uh, um, class diagram but maybe a, a whole set of uh, uh, class diagrams and so we know that classes can have relationships and they will be uh, organizing the structure here so sometimes when we have a subcomponent here and another subcomponent Over here, right? So another uh, another uh, subcomponent uh, with uh, its own classes right here. Sometimes we want to designate certain objects um, in these subcomponents as designed to intercommunicate between the components in the system, right? So these objects sort of like become the facade. So we can have a structure right here, and one of the objects is specifically designed to have a set of operations that are most commonly used outside of this component. So then component number one can interact with component number two through these specially designated control objects. So this is also something that we can recognize in this category. So we're just uh, starting to analyze our use case requirements and uh, so what type of things are we looking for in order in order to discover uh, classes for our design structure so tangible objects are uh, basically uh, some sort of equipment like a robotic arm so we probably want to design a component in the system a class that is dedicated to controlling a robotic arm and so that's uh, becomes uh, sort of like a control object for a tangible machinery um, also uh, there is another uh, type of uh, objects which are extremely often uh, can be uh, found in, in multiple systems uh, specifications contracts or descriptions for example a car registration um, a driver license uh, and a mailing address right so these are something that kind of specifies uh, um, something that can be bound by uh, legal rules uh, regulations that uh, represent uh, legal documents that are typically stored in the database. So this is something that is very uh, nice uh, candidate to become a class uh, in a system. Uh, places, so geographical locations, uh, in general, uh, maybe parts of the organizational structure uh, of, um, a, a, of a certain large enterprise transactions so transactions are actually uh, encapsulated versions of processes so we have um, typically if uh, our use case documentation documents uh, certain processes that are made up of stages right so we have certain stages of a certain process that is uh, uh, conducted like this so we describe that there are rules that uh, first part needs to be completed the second part needs to be completed the third part needs to be completed very often we can view such process as a transaction altogether uh, the meaning of transaction is that um, for a successful completion of this process all three stages have to be completed successfully and interestingly sometimes these processes are so complicated that uh, we may have a persistence layer over here and and during each stage of this process we'll already start making changes in a persistence layer so we're already making modifications 
uh, to the records that persist in the database. So that really becomes a classic transaction. And so the idea is that either all of these steps succeed or none of them should be even um, um, viewed as attempted is transactional. Basically, the idea of the transaction is the transaction has to have uh, an ability to roll back entirely as if it never being attempted. We can create uh, records, uh, historical records, audit trail records, uh, log records about attempt to execute these steps. But the core entities in the database, the actual business records, should not be disturbed if, uh, for instance, stage three for some reason cannot uh, continue. Okay, so of course the classic example of a transaction is a money transfer from one account to another. So part of that type of transaction, we have to withdraw the money from one place and deposit them in a different place. So of course, if, if one of these stages does not succeed, we should be able to roll back entirely uh, into the original state and perhaps create a log record that the transaction attempt was in, unsuccessful. So oftentimes these types of processes, transactional uh, steps, uh, should be represented as objects. Normally transactional objects have uh, additional structures built into them that can record the history uh, the, the trail of steps that they have executed successfully. And in case if something happens in the middle of the transaction, this history is used to roll back the steps to the original state. Oftentimes, we also can talk and recognize classes uh, that represents the roles of people, the institutions, the devices. So this uh, in common kind of falls back into everything that we discussed uh, uh, already. Uh, but basically, if we're starting to talk about organizational structure with managers, employees, contractors, um, temporary workers, permanent type uh, workers, and so forth and so forth, this all may suggest not even just individual classes, but even um, a hierarchy of classes because there are, we can see the traces of hierarchical um, relationship between, uh, between these um, individual entities. Uh, this can be also true with institutions, with their, with their, um, you know, parent um, and, and, and children uh, type of sub-organizations and so forth. Oftentimes devices play a certain role and devices may interact with each other. Um, so um, that could be found easily in robotics. So there as well, we see communication between them. And of course, these devices will play certain roles um, in that uh, type of communication. So these, um, uh, these instances uh, are absolutely great candidates uh, for classes in our system. Oftentimes, we have containers. Right, so containers, for example, in 3D environment, we may want to build a scenery for 3D world for virtualization of the environment in, in 3D view. Of course, you need to construct that world that is made up of uh, vehicles and roads and trash cans and um, uh, trees and buildings and other uh, parts of the scenery. Well, guess what? You probably need to have a container for your world objects. Um, so that, uh, of course, uh, uh, a lot of attention will be given to how do we keep track of all the objects that we want to um, populate. Some of them we, we may want to be able to generate uh, randomly, and some of them should be loaded from the storage of a database or some other type of record to be able to be populated in this type of container. So containers, uh, uh, sequences of uh, elements, um, uh, arrays, uh, these are all great candidates to become dedicated classes that essentially facilitate um, interaction and management of items inside the container.